I'm gonna give Godzilla and Kong a new empire a 8 out of 10. And here's why. What it do, I'm Stu, let me be your movie guy. Today, we'll be talking about Godzilla and Kong, a new empire. And I really love this franchise. There are five films, including Godzilla and Kong, a new empire within the franchise. You have Godzilla in 2014. You have Kong Skull Island. You got Godzilla King of the Monsters. You got Godzilla versus Kong. And then of course, which is what we're all here to talk about today. We got Godzilla and Kong, a new empire. And this film rocks. If you want to see huge monsters just jack for like two hours or so, this is the film for you. And surprisingly, surprisingly, there is an emotional beat in a kaiju film. And that emotional beat includes Kong having to be sort of a, or take on a fatherly role um, for another um, monkey of his kind, of his species. And the reason why that beat works so well is because the, um, the uh, uh, mentee that he has, has come from a section of apes, or large apes, I should say, that are under the rule of the villain, which is the Scar King. And he's very abusive. He eats the babies of female apes. Like, he's just not a good person, obviously. And his goal is to reach the surface world and tear everything up. <laughs> and I'm gonna get into that shortly on why that was kind of funny. Uh, so seeing Kong interact with this very, very much younger um, ape, teaching him the ways of like mercy and forgiveness, which is something that that ape that he's trying to mentor did not grow up in that kind of environment. And I thought that it was very powerful to say that you don't have to be what your environment is. You can rise above that and be something entirely different, something that is good, something that is positive. And that is why I really like that emotional beat of the film. Um, in terms of like, <laughs> What Godzilla was doing in the film, I'm not gonna lie, I was rolling because Godzilla is such an on site type of character. He's literally prepping for the invasion of, well, he doesn't technically know what the invasion is, but he feels something of immense power coming um, to the surface world. So he is prepping. And do you know how he's prepping? He is going from kaiju to kaiju and beating their tails. He is bullying people. And when he finally sees Kong fresh off the previous film, he is not trying to talk. Kong is there to try to convince Godzilla to come help him in the hollow earth world where Scar King is and stop him from coming to the surface world. And they are scrapping for about two minutes um, Godzilla gets his lick back quite a few times, but ultimately, you know, you've got this giant lizard that has atomic breath, so you're not gonna beat that. As much as I love Kong, obviously he cannot beat that, but he got he got his licks off, so that was great. So once they finally get Godzilla to the Hollow Earth, and they're like scrapping with uh, all of Scar King's people, I mean with uh yeah with uh, Scar King. I think that it was really funny that like once they did manage to get to the surface world, you kind of forget how large these kaiju are. Like when they're fighting in the world of Hollow Earth, you're just seeing like the way that it's scaled, you're 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 not able to comprehend in my opinion how large these kaiju are in comparison to whatever they're standing next to. And that's very much highlighted. That's why I was talking about earlier that it was kind of funny that once they get to the surface world, it's like, oh dang, Scar King is like huge. <laughs> He's not a regular sized monkey. Like this is a gigantic evil monkey. And to see them finally on the, on the surface world, I feel like that was really my main issue with the film was that it didn't get, for most of the film, it didn't give you a very sound understanding or picture of how large the kaiju are in comparison to everything else that they're around, including humans and buildings and trees and everything of, of that nature. 
Um, but with that being said, I thought that the film was pretty solid. Is it, like even though it's like a popcorn flick, as I've seen a lot of people say, it still has heart. It's still very entertaining. I would probably classify it as a family film. I think this film will, will, would be great for a family going to see it on a Saturday afternoon um, because you know it's nothing but great action, great scenes. Um, the music was pretty good. The cinematography though is was great, and that is something I really appreciate about these films. Like from Godzilla in 2014 to Godzilla and Kong: A New Empire, the cinematography has been consistently great. And that is something I really appreciate because they could just say, oh, it's just big dumb monsters fighting. We're not going to focus too much on the cinematography and how we compose shots and all those type of things. But they do a really good job of like composing some really nice shots. Um, so with that being said, Godzilla, A New Empire, I would give a 8 out of 10. I'm taking two points off because of that scaling issue. And I personally would have liked to have seen a little bit of more Godzilla in the film because they kind of led on that this would be more of like a buddy cop film. We'll see Kong and Godzilla like doing this together throughout the film, but it's more so like the last 30 minutes or so. So I would give it an 8 out of 10, but let me know what you thought. Um, as always, subscribe, drop your comments down below. Are you going to see the next film, whatever it's going to be? Let me know. Peace.